Today on the Run to the Top podcast. I'm tired of watching brands and publications continue this dangerous narrative that strength looks the same way or that we don't see diverse bodies, ethnicities or ages. Like when was the last time you saw a 60 year old in an ad? I see those women at races kicking my ass all the time. Welcome to the Run to the Top podcast from Runners Connect, where it's all about learning from the best and most inspiring minds in the sport. Together, we can train a smarter, healthier, and faster running community. Now here's your host, Sinead Hockey. Hi everyone, this is Sinead back with you again for this latest episode of Run to the Top brought to you by Runners Connect. I hope you're having a great day and this podcast leaves you feeling excited to tackle your next big goals. We're in for a very real, very inspiring episode today. But before I introduce our guest, I just want to share a little bit about last week's episode, just in case you missed it. I was fortunate enough to sit down with avid runner and world-renowned sport tech guru, Ray Maker of the DC Rainmaker blog. Ray reviews every fitness gadget imaginable on the site, which, by the way, gets over a million visitors a month. And he was also named one of the 50 most influential people in running by Runner's World. During the episode, Ray shared with us the good, bad, and ugly of the sports tech world, as well as some tips as to how we can get the most accuracy out of our GPS watches, fitness trackers, heart rate monitors, you name it, he talked about it. If you missed it, there was something in that episode for everyone, so be sure to check it out. On to this week's episode. In 2009, founder of Run Selfie Repeat, Kelly Roberts, was thrown into the deep end when she suddenly lost her younger brother, Scott. It goes without saying, this was an incredibly difficult and emotionally draining time for Kelly. And struggling to cope, she gained about 70 pounds by the end of the year. She knew she needed to find some way to work out her grief, and that's when she found running. The sport has become invaluable to Kelly, and now, eight years later, She uses it to uplift thousands of others through her blog and podcast. Kelly is breaking societal norms about what strong runners ought to look like and inspiring others to pursue the best versions of themselves. She's a true ambassador of the sport, and I am so excited to have her on today's show. One thing before we get going here, just in case you're listening to this with your kids around, there are a couple expletives during the episode. Nothing too obscene, just wanted to give you a little warning in case there are any small ears in the room and you would like to switch to headphones during the break here. As usual, we'll be right back with our interview in just a few. On this week's episode, we're actually sponsoring ourselves. If you're looking for a custom training plan, coaching support, and an amazing team of supportive, like-minded runners, head on over to runnersconnect.net forward slash train. There, you can start your free two-week trial and add your name to the nearly thousand fellow runners we've helped achieve new personal bests. Again, that's runnersconnect.net forward slash train. We hope you join us. Thanks so much for joining us, Kelly. Hi. It's so good to have you. I'm a huge fan of your blog. I know a lot of our listeners are probably familiar with you through your blog, Run Selfie Repeat, but... Before we get into all of that, I did kind of want to start from the beginning. What really prompted you to start running and what has that journey been like since you started? It's funny because I've always wanted to be a runner because I think I used to think running would make me skinny. (laughs) I'm like everyone else had that mindset that runners are skinny. (laughs) They just are. (laughs) Running makes you skinny. And I I can vividly remember like being in sixth or seventh grade and watching Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> and there's like a scene where Bridget races her foxy soccer coach on the beach and they run in the books, they run like 10 miles or something. And I was like, I can be skinny if I can run. And I remember like being putting on like a, a fake sports bra and like my shoes and trying to run down the block and just not being able to make it and being like, I am never going to be able to look like Bridget. <laughs> and like that same scenario would play out every summer for like the next 
20 years, <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> however long. And I just, I've always really struggled with being active. Like when I would go to the gym, I would go to the gym to lose weight. And I hated every single second. I felt like I didn't belong there. I felt like people were judging me. I was really insecure. And I've, I've always been on the heavier side of healthy. I've never really been overweight until my brother passed away in 2009. And when someone dies, people give you food. <laughs> I don't know what it is in our culture that says eat. Like, could you imagine the world if like when something horrible happens, they're like, take care of yourself and get active and like say nice things to yourself. Well, how much better off we'd be. <laughs> but no, like instead my friends to make, try to do anything to make me feel better. Cause I was in a downward spiral. We would like sit and watch movies and eat brownies. And soon enough, like it caught up with me and I like, I would just, I feel like I woke up one day and I had gained over 75 pounds. I didn't weigh myself and I, I don't know how heavy I was at my heaviest, but I was over 200 pounds and I had to like totally redo my life. And it took a long time to get to the point where I wanted to adopt a healthy lifestyle change. And with the help of like, I was taking a nutrition course in college and my teacher was helping me and I was going to the gym every day. And I just had, I was in therapy over like a year, I lost all the weight. And after I graduated from college, I was terrified that I was going to gain it all back because I just kind of was lost. I didn't really know what to do. I had gotten my undergraduate in theater. And it's, I always say this, it's like going to Hogwarts. It's so <laughs> cool to tell people you got a theater degree, but you, there's nothing you can do with it except act, which is like, do you want to be poor and unemployed for the rest of your life? <laughs> and I just, I, I went home and I moved home and I sat there trying to figure out what I was going to do. And Thanksgiving is always a hard holiday, but that was the day like I hadn't slept. I was really like grief stricken and I decided to go for a run and I didn't same as that day, that first day when I wanted to be like Bridget, like I made it only down the block. I thought I was going to die, but for some reason I didn't turn around and get back into bed. I, I just walked and then I ran a little bit and I didn't really have anything going on. You know, I was working as a receptionist. I I wasn't happy. And so it just like, even though it was so hard and horrible, it just gave me something to do. And I didn't have any goal race or anything in mind. Like I had no, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> the only person who knew was my best friend, Irene, that I was running because she had like picked up in college and just said, I'm going to run a marathon and join team and training and did it. And she was kind of helping me, but I just, I, I, the pain was so, it just made sense to me. And it, 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 everything started clicking and it started helping me see that not knowing what I was doing and not being able to believe in myself wasn't a death sentence. And I could do anything I put my mind to. And the ball just started rolling. And then I ran a half and then I ran a full and found the courage to move to New York. And I moved to New York and then went viral for taking selfies during a half <laughs> marathon and found myself in a weird situation where people were like, start a blog right now as quick as you can. And I did. And it gave me the courage to tell my story and open up about things that I had tied so much shame to from my weight, to my grief, to all sorts of my life. And fast forward four years and like running has really changed my life. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's so clear. And that's something I did. I wanted to ask you was how has running actually impacted other aspects of your life. I know a lot of people run for various reasons. For you, it was, it seems you needed to kind of use it as an outlet. How has it impacted your life in general at this point? You know, I've always been a really confident and loud person and I've never second guessed myself. I've always probably erred on the too ambitious side. <laughs> And after I graduated, it was really the first time that I stopped and said, I don't believe in myself. I can't do this. And that was totally foreign to me. I like can BS my way out of a box. And for me to stop and say, I don't believe in myself was like totally life changing and running because it's always been something that it, I mean, still to this day is so hard for me. I ran like the hardest four miles of my life yesterday. <laughs> The fact that like those sorts of things can still be so humbling for me, it's that constant reminder that just because something is hard or just because something feels impossible doesn't mean that you shouldn't try. And learning like the only way you'll fail is if you fail to try and how you see success and failure, redefining all those things and just having the courage to show up, that has bled into my life, in my personal life 
in my professional life. It's given, I mean, I have to show up to these running things and sit there as a professional, like quote unquote runner. I'm not an elite athlete, but I'm still like in the running world and learning how to be courageous in my own skin has been very difficult because a lot of the times, like I do feel like an other, and it has absolutely changed the way I see myself and how I see myself in the world. Mm, absolutely. And I, I love what you've said about just the very fact that when you started running in, in high school, you did it as a means to be one of those skinny runners. Whereas I, like you said, I feel like one of your, the missions behind your blog is to kind of reinforce the fact that runners come in all sizes. So that's one thing I do want to talk to you about later on. But first off, your your blog kind of got got off to a funny start with your um, your hottie hunting selfies <laughs> that you took. So I did want to talk to you a little bit about that. What what prompted you to do that? And what uh, how did that kind of um, ignite your blog and your your fame on um, social media? It's, it was really just something I did to make my sister laugh. <laughs> I. I hadn't trained for the race. I ha- I was about to break up with the first, like my first real kind of boyfriend. And that was sucky. I was just surviving my first New York winter, which as someone from San Diego, like it was a polar vortex year. No. <laughs> and like I, it was my first bout of seasonal depression, which was really difficult. It's the reason I go West now. Like after two of those, I was like, I can't, I can't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's too hard. It's horrible. It's horrible. I would much rather pick up my life <laughs> and leave for three months than than be here and have to like endure that sadness of not going outside and not seeing the sun and being cold. It's <laughs> it's, it's real. Like so, I, yeah, I grew is. up in South Carolina and I even experienced it down there. So I can't imagine. I I don't know what it is. Like my West Coast body cannot handle winter. I have to, I'm <laughs> staying here for winter this year, I think. And I'm to, I'm so afraid. Oh gosh. I'm like already like with my therapist, like, I don't know if I can do it. And she's like, Fine. you're going to get a coat. <laughs> you're going to be great. You're going to be great. But uh, yeah, like I was about to break up with him and it's a long story, but I was just, I remember sitting in my corral and I was going to my sister, who's like the world's most supportive human being on the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. It was 20 degrees, I think 25 Ooh. degrees freezing. Like it, I couldn't feel my feet for the first two miles. It was that cold. Oh, gosh. I remember turning to a random stranger and being like, I can't feel my feet. Am I going to be okay? And they were like, I can't either. You're going to be fine. <laughs> but she was standing on a street corner, holding a sign, like trusty <laughs> sister who always shows up for me. Cause she knew also, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I haven't trained. I just like, I really feel like I need to run. And she was like, just do it. Like you can always pop out if you don't make it, you're fine. Like go do what you need to do. So to make her laugh, I did, I took a selfie with a hot guy and I just did it throughout the race just to distract myself. And I thought it was stupid. And I thought the same eight people who liked my Instagram photos would like that, like them and be like, Oh, Kelly back at it again, (laughs) weird things. And my sister was like, let's make this into a Buzzfeed post. This is hilarious. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So she did, we did. And the next thing I knew it was a slow news week and it went viral. And uh, that's when people were like, you're getting all this press and there's nowhere to link to you and you should have a blog. So we sat there and just very quickly, like for 10 hours at work, came up with as many different blog names as we can and got something on its feet and started trying to figure out what I was doing and what I wanted to say. That's amazing. Took, like here to really figure out my voice. I mean, starting a blog is so for someone like me, I spent most of my life trying not to like let people in. Mm. I've been, I've had a pretty rough life. So I'd always uh, built a lot of walls mm-hmm. and no one really knew anything about me and I kept everything in. So for me, starting a blog and learning how to be comfortable with my story was pretty transformative. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. I I feel like starting a blog would be kind of difficult, like you said, because you are just letting people into your life. But It seems like with your blog, the intent is really to build a sense of community and and really help other runners um, feel more comfortable with what they're doing as well. So that's that's pretty interesting that that's how it got off to a start. But how how has it evolved since then? And and where do you see your blog going in the next few years? Well, it's so funny that you say that because we're I'm about to go through a big rebrand right now. And it's going to, it's going to go live in the next like two, maybe four weeks, oh, wow. which okay. I'm really excited about. Run self repeat will be no longer. 
so that's pretty weird and bizarre to think about. But I mean, I think from the beginning, it was never really about running. It was just finding ways of empowerment. And for me, that was running. And uh, over the years, it it just became, how can I shut this inner critic down? Mm-hmm. How can I find different ways to look in the mirror and love what I see? Not because I'm tricking myself into loving it, not because I'm faking it until I make it, but because I'm actually putting in the work. And I, I would be absolutely lying if I didn't say that all these years I've been, I've, I have been convincing myself if I can get faster, I will lose weight. I will finally look the way I think I need to look. And it really wasn't until last year that, uh, when I started to try to BQ, which was a crazy experience and life-changing experience in and of itself. When I started like running the times and mileages that I was running and I, my body did change. Like I definitely was in crazy awesome shape and I felt amazing, but I was like being able to keep up with the women that I thought I needed to look like. And we're all friends. Like the running community is so incredible and everyone is so open and honest and loving with their stories and generous with their stories. And I was starting to realize that everyone around me felt the same way, that we didn't feel beautiful, that we didn't seem like we were enough. So that's when the sports bra squad started because it was hot as hell. (laughs) And I was just like wearing these layers and I was too afraid to wear shorts and I was too afraid to run in my sports bra and I was dying. Like I would have to run these like tempo long runs. And I just thought I was, and I can't wake up early. Like I, it's physically impossible for me to wake up early to get them done. So I was already like a strike against me. But once, once the sports bra squad, the hashtag started and people started sharing their stories, I started looking into the research and I found like, 95% of eating disorders happen between like 12 and 25 year olds. Like Mm -hmm. 70% of women hate their bodies. Like the amount of, like the percentage of women who would say yes to getting physical or not physical therapy. (laughs) Do you like how that's where my brain automatically goes? (laughs) Cosmetic surgery because they don't like their bodies. And like, I've been in therapy for a very long time. And something my therapist has been doing with me for a long time is like celebrating myself, writing down things I do good. And she would, she would tell me to look in the mirror and tell myself I'm beautiful every time I knocked myself or critiqued myself or told myself I was fat or like unattractive or not good enough. She would say in those moments, like you have to start saying like, I am beautiful Mm -hmm. or name things that you like love about yourself. You know, like I love my strong quads. My quads aren't fat. They're strong, things like that. And I've, I've known how transformative that can be when you do that. And how, how it takes time, just like anything else. You don't pick up and run a marathon. Mm-hmm. You spend months building the endurance and physical strength to do that. But we, we do the physical work, but we don't do the mental work. Mm. We don't build ourselves up. And we as women, especially like we are that we're so quick to tear ourselves down or to like put words in other people's heads and to just like knock ourselves. So changing the dialogue and redefining what strength looks like has been like, a battle cry for me because I'm just tired of not seeing women represented different sizes. I'm tired of, of watching brands and publications, like continue this dangerous narrative that like strength looks the same way or that, you know, we don't see different, like diverse bodies or Mm. ethnicities, like all ages. Like when was the last time you saw a 60 year old in an ad? Never. I can't say that I have. I see those women at races kicking my ass all the time. (laughs) Where are they? (laughs) I'm just, it's so bizarre. It's, it's incredibly frustrating too, but that's what I love about your blog and, um, and just all of your social media accounts. You're kind of a breath of fresh air because when you scroll through Instagram and I know you've written several articles on this, what you see is highly doctored, images of uh, of runners they've taken a million photos and chosen the best one um you know people only posting what what's going on at their at their absolute best never what's going on maybe say if they're having a bad day or a bad workout it's just that's what I love about your blog it's so real and it really does remind runners that we all have insecurities we all have bad days and um I think that's part of what makes the running community so great is we all can commiserate with one another and kind of build a sense of community off that. But with your, your sports bra squad, um, hashtag, where did you see people kind of joining in on that? Where was it kind of a slow process or did people automatically jump on that hashtag? I think it automatically took off. And that was when I knew I kind of had something. 
but for so many people it's taken, I mean, it's, it's over a year old now. And for so many people, I had this Wazelle, who's one of my sponsors had the amazing idea this summer to have like national global sports bra squad day. Mm -hmm. And we blew it up. And I had in New York, a big, you know, like panel discussion and sports bra squad run. And before it started, I like asked everyone there, raise your hand if this is your first time running in your sports bra. And I would say like 70% of the room raised their hand. Gosh, wow. And I was like, God damn it. (sighs) One, you don't have to run in your sports bra to feel strong or to love your body or to be beautiful. You can, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like the sports bra squad isn't just about running in your sports bra. It's about for so many women, the reason they don't do it is because they feel ashamed of their bodies or they don't think they're mm-hmm. good enough or they're afraid of being harassed on the street. You mm-hmm. know, like I can't, I, it, I, I moved somewhere different in Brooklyn and before I moved, like I never got harassed. No one ever said a, a word to me, but now I'm kind of like near a, a thoroughfare and like a big expressway. Mm-hmm. Yep. I want every day when I run to the track, I get at least five men saying degrading things to me. And it is so insane to me that we live in a world where <laughs> men feel like they can say the things that they say to us. And just like the things that even people say to me online every day, I'm like, what world do we live in where we, where we are so quick to be so horrible? Mm. Where's the empathy? What is going on? But I mean, honestly, I think it starts with us. I think women need to start saying nice things to themselves and we just need to start the dialogue of how to talk to one another. After the break, Kelly will share with us what it's meant for her to work with Wazelle as well as her tips for how to work past any inhibitions holding you back from your goals. This is Sinead Hockey, and you're listening to Run to the Top at Runners Connect. Nod with me if you've ever been in the middle of a training segment and had to miss a few days because you either got sick or work got busy or you had to travel. I can pretty much guarantee that all of you listening have experienced this before. And that's where having a coach becomes really valuable. When life throws you a few curveballs, we can adjust your workouts so you're not falling behind and not doing too much to try and catch back up. We also do everything we can to make sure you get the most out of every single workout. And that's just one of the awesome features our training plans have. We also build in strength workouts completely custom to your weaknesses, injuries, and goal race distance. Each workout you're assigned comes with in-depth instructions, and we of course build a training plan completely around you. No templates, no modifications needed on your end, Just a training plan written to your strengths and weaknesses and designed to help you achieve your goals. If you want to check it out, head on over to runnersconnect.net forward slash train and start a free two-week trial. We hope you join us. We are back with Kelly Roberts and Kelly, earlier we were talking about all the unhealthy fallacies surrounding what it means to be strong. And you you just uh, mentioned that you have been working with Wazelle, which is, uh, like you said, one of the few brands that actually um, really just promotes the entire spectrum of a runner's body. You're not, yeah. you know, depending, regardless of age and size, everyone is depicted within Wazelle. And that's what I love about this brand. But how has it been working with them? And, and when did you get started working with them? When was that? It's a dream. It's the greatest. They're they're a team of incredible, smart, <laughs> ambitious, and emboldened women. It's it, it's been so intimidating. I will totally <laughs> admit the first four months were like me being too afraid to, you know, like <laughs> do what I do best <laughs> and waiting for permission, which is totally a woman thing to do. And then I was like, you need to knock it off <laughs> and <laughs> be who you are. But uh, it started, they... I I think, well, they told me that they, you know, tweeted out, you know, who are some of the women that you look up to? And a couple of people tweeted about me. 
Mm-hmm. And so they reached out and uh, we found out we were both going to be at the Chicago Marathon. So they came to my first sports bra squad meetup Oh, nice! and they brought shirts that said my other shirt says sports bra. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a perfect thing. And we hung out and talked and the election was happening. So we, you know, we talked a lot about that mm-hmm. and what it means to be a woman today and what our goals were. And they just aligned. And uh, we said, let's keep in touch. We'll find ways to work together and when the new year started, you know, they reached out to me and said, like, we'd really love to bring you on as a muse and come a part of our team and just find ways to bring inclusivity to the sport. Mm-hmm. And they have this amazing new program that they started this year. It's called Got Bras and Got is short for girls on track. Oh, okay. And what they're trying to do is it's kind of going to be like the Toms of sports bras. They have a program where for middle school and high school girls, they, they go in and they educate them on why it's so important that, you know, like they feel empowered by their bodies mm-hmm. and that they take care of their bodies and that they eat to fuel their bodies and that they don't feel ashamed of their growing boobs <laughs> because there's this huge drop off of girls in sports. And I, I mean, I would know I stopped working out the second my body changed mm-hmm. and I felt so stupid and ashamed of being slow that I just completely stopped running at all as a middle schooler. And it was just so hard. And and for women, especially like the research is, is there women f- like they benefit from being on teams. They're braver. They learn to, you know, deal with failure better mm-hmm. and yeah. like sportsmanship and being on a team just makes you a stronger woman. So the, what they're doing is they're trying to keep these girls in sports. And then also for the girls who can't afford sports bras, or maybe they're too ashamed or embarrassed to ask for one. They're showing them how to fit them and then they're giving them to them. They're oh, saying, that's amazing. yeah, like I went to Seattle for, uh, they did a, oh, what is girls on the run girls yeah, on the run. Yep. Seattle. Mm-hmm. I went out there to Seattle to, for one of the events and we were giving like, I think we brought like a thousand sports bras and we gave a thousand sports bras out to girls and their moms in the amount of moms who didn't know how to fit a sports bra. Oh gosh. Even <laughs> the amount of women who maybe looked like me and I could tell that they were about my size. They would want like a size four or six because they wanted to be smaller. Mm, yeah. And I was like, yo, <laughs> your size is not something to be ashamed of. What you need is something that works. So here you go. I don't care what you do with it. Try it on right now. Like girl, you're my size and I am strong and fast as hell. So <laughs> you go girl. But it was so crazy to watch these little girls feel so ashamed about asking for a sports bra. Like they would just look at us like they were afraid and we're like, boobs are cool. You're fine. Have them, <laughs> don't have them, whatever. Like your body is your body. <laughs> As long as you have like this hardware that works, that's what matters. <laughs> Spread the word. <laughs> oh, I love that. And I yeah. I know, like like you said, every every young girl does go through that period where their bodies start changing. I know, personally speaking, I started running when I was 12 and there was solid like two or three years where I just kind of fell off the map with my running and kind of plateaued. And, um, you know, it's it's such a hard time to get through for a girl, but... I, I love I love that that you guys are really Moiselle is working to just make it more inclusive for young girls and for really just everybody um, of all shapes and sizes. So that's that's awesome. Though. That's a really that was that's a pretty cool event that you guys had out in Seattle there. I'm excited to see what happens with Got Bras. It's still just like a teeny tiny little baby of a program and there's nowhere to go but up. But it's I mean, it's going to be pretty awesome. That's so cool. And Wazel, I still feel like they, they've they made a huge leaps and bounds over the last few years, but I feel like they're still uh, really, really growing here. So where do you think Wazel is going to be in the next few years? Do you think they, they've got a few uh, campaigns underway that are really going to just build this inclusivity with women runners? Yeah, it's crazy. I It always boggles my brain that women are, are very profitable right now, especially over the last year. And it's been so interesting watching like companies like Wazell by women for women who have been around. I think Wazell's 10 years old. They've been around for a long time. They've been like banging on doors and trying to break through glass ceilings for a while. And then you watch all these other companies realize that women are profitable (laughs) and they start launching really like girl power, which we need. Like, I'm not saying, you know, like shame on you. Where were you 10 years ago? We need you. Like everyone needs to show up for women. But it's also like interesting to draw a circle around who's showing up now. You mm-hmm. know, I think Wazelle, like there's the things that they have up their sleeves, like they're just 
they're trying to give the empowering gift of running to everyone Mm -hmm. and show it doesn't matter if you never run an organized race in your life. It's so important to find women and give the gift to everyone and find women in your neighborhood who you can, you know, take off to run a mile with find other women who maybe you don't have the same thing in common with, but like you share running, find those women and and just bring them all together. Cause I, it, running is so empowering. It absolutely is. If you would have told me that four years ago, I would have told you to go, you know what yourself. Like, <laughs> I was one of those people who really poo pooed it. I thought only really serious people ran. And like, if you ran, you ran marathons. I thought I didn't understand the world. And I, I really did feel like an other cause I was never athletic. And I think something that was, I was doing a really good job of is that they're showing all the different stories. I mean, just this week, there was a woman who had a double mastectomy. They, they shared her story of what running has done for her and like showing all these different aspects of how running can change people's lives and bring people together is just, mm. that's what it's about bringing Absolutely. people together and empowering them. Yep, absolutely. I think that that's what running is about at its core. And I just, yeah, I love that about, um, about Wazelle is that they are just trying to make it more inclusive for, for runners everywhere. And that's something interesting actually about, I actually interviewed someone a few months back who shared an interesting stat. He said that the amount of women runners has increased by something oh, yeah. like 30, 30% over the last decade, even. So it's, it's pretty crazy. It's it's. I think we're fifty five percent to forty five percent on the half marathon like finishers. Yeah, that's just it's amazing, and it's a lot Women of older. Yeah, it's a lot of older runners too, which is yes. always good to see too. So that's what I love about Moiselle, and it's not just that they're bringing women more women into the sport, but they're also making running more about something that empowers you and has an effect on other aspects of your life. And so that was one thing that your blog has been, you've had a lot of articles on how running has helped you just become more healthier, both mentally and physically. So yeah. with that, what has been, I mean, you, you ended up losing quite a bit of weight throughout your progress here as a runner. So how has that process been for you and, and what were there a few challenges along the way in keeping up with this active lifestyle? How did you kind of keep motivated with running? Yes. Oh my God. Losing weight is hard. Like I'll be the first to admit that that eating brownies is a lot more fun than, oh, yeah. <laughs> than not eating brownies. For me, like I, there, it, it was so simple. I cut everything out and I ate nothing but lean meats and vegetables and a tiny bit of like complex carbs. Mm. I had a very regimented diet for 12 months. And I went to the gym six or seven days a week. And then I became super obsessed. Once I lost all the weight, this was the hardest part was dealing with the body dysmorphia that I had. And then trying to, to appease this never ending fear that I was going to gain all the weight back. Mm, Yeah. And that is something that I still to this day struggle with. And it's the reason I'm still in therapy. Like it is, I'm, I'm pretty positive. It's going to be lifelong. I mean, I can easily say that running marathons became a way for me to like manage a kind of unhealthy diet. People are always like, you can't outrun a bad diet. And I'm like, watch me. (laughs) I will try, but it's true. Like it, it is about balance. It is very much about like this body positivity movement that we have is so crucial and it's so important and it's so amazing. We have to have it, but it's twofold. On the one side, yes, we need to tell ourselves that we're beautiful today. The skin Mm -hmm. we're in today is beautiful and perfect, but we also need to be eating well, learning what a balanced diet looks like and finding that balance, you know, like strength and health comes in all different shapes and sizes. Mm-hmm. I know that I am strong and that I'm very healthy. I, I eat very well. <laughs> I am very educated in how to eat. I'm probably one of the most obsessive people I know, but obsessive being obsessed with everything and consumed by what you put in your body also isn't healthy. Mm-mm. It's just about balance and finding that balance. And I think that's something that America needs right now is like we we're in the midst of an ob- obesity epidemic. I was obese. I can tell you that I, I had a hard time walking upstairs. I had, can tell you that I, I, everything was a struggle. And that was my story. Like, that's how it was for me. 
and I wasn't happy and I made a change, but you can't look at someone and like shame doesn't work. You can't shame someone into changing. You can't shame someone into wanting to like work to put their strongest foot forward. All we can do is make people feel heard and understood and like make a healthy lifestyle accessible. Because mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, I, I, I don't think I, I think I can name on one hand the amount of people who actually know how to eat a healthy, balanced diet in my life. It's something that we're not taught at all. Absolutely not. Yeah. Like I actually, the, um, the man I interviewed last week for the show, his name's Bob Sibahar. He's a big sports dietitian, but he just said the way that we eat when we get older is just so unintuitive. Like when we were younger, yeah. it's, you know, we eat when we're hungry, we stop when we're not. But as we get older, there's so much emotional eating. Uh, it's just, yeah. it is this, um, you know, it's become a bit of an epidemic, like you said. And I think with blogs like yours, you are really just helping people not only find the motivation to get active and find find balance, but also feel comfortable in their skin at the present time being. And And that's something that's so important, I know, for a lot of People maybe say if they're in the the Couch to 5K program, for instance, just being comfortable enough to say go to the gym or or go out for a run in their sports bra is just so important. And that's what I love about your blog. So as you've kind of, you know, adopted this more active lifestyle and you've kind of found balance, what would you say has been your proudest accomplishment and something that maybe the biggest hurdle that you've gone over successfully so far? I would say it's threefold. I would say my first half marathon was a pretty traumatizing day and one that was latent in so much (laughs) doubt. Like I literally almost walked off the course. Mile 11, our hotel was right there. And I was very much like, I can't do it. I think I will. I will actually die if I keep going. And like just at that moment, a girl came up to me and was like, I'm having a really hard time. And we've been next to each other the whole time. Can we run together? And I was like, oh. God, oh, what a godsend. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, exactly. And she got me to the finish line. But that was biggest, biggest accomplishment. And then um my first marathon, for sure, equally as traumatizing as that first one. I mean, I always tell people like your first races are like the best, worst days of your life because <laughs> they're so incredible and life changing. But at the same time, they're really hard. Mm. Like really, really, really hard. Nothing can prepare you for what that's like, even your training runs. And that's not to scare you. It's just to say, like, there's a reason that you feel like such a badass Mm -hmm. when you make that impossible goal possible. It's because, like, it it's hard. It is really, really hard. Oh yeah. And then uh, I would say Chicago last year when I tried to be cute. That was, that was a pretty life changing day. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like you said. I feel like that first race is so. The, scary. The, it's so scary, but once you finish so it too, the the sense of fulfillment is just yeah. You want to go back for more, and that's what I think keeps people in the sport. But you, a lot of what you've talked about today has been about just breaking out of your comfort zone, and I think to do that, um, or to run your first race, you really have to do that. So, what advice would you give someone who is maybe just getting into running? And um, they're just trying to break out of their comfort zone. Don't do it alone. I mean, I ran alone for an entire year because I was too afraid of being the slowest person. I was too afraid to like actually admit that I was a runner, that I was trying to be a runner to anyone. I didn't want anyone to see me struggle. And uh, you can do it alone. People do it alone all the time. But it is so much more rewarding and it is so much more fun when you do it with people. Like if there's a November project in your town, start showing up, wake up, do whatever you got to do. Join a charity do anything. Just reach out to people, find someone who doesn't run and start running with you, like set a goal together or like find these online communities come to our, like there, it's always so cool when girls tell me that they meet at maybe like one of our meetups or they meet in the comment sections of stuff. And then they become like best friends. Someone sent me an email yesterday that these the girl that they met a couple while, while ago through my blog, like she was her bridesmaid at <laughs> her wedding party. And I'm like, that oh is my the gosh. coolest thing That's awesome. I have ever seen in my life. So don't do it alone. Two, I would say anything that, that you say is impossible, draw a circle around it and try to do it. Mm. That's something that's been really motivating for me is, uh, that it's really hard to redefine our self-imposed limits and change them. Cause like, it's so, 
how often do we say like, that's impossible. I'm not going to do that. I would never be able to do that before. Mm -hmm. We're like, you know what? Who knows? Let's just see what happens if I just go for it. I've tried a lot of things and not done them and fallen short. And it's hard in the moment. And sometimes it does break your heart, but you come out of it knowing like I had the courage to say yes. I had Mm -hmm. the courage to see what would happen. Like, yes, that's a success. It's a huge success. Mm -hmm. I've crashed and burned more times than I can count. (laughs) Like (laughs) the, the, the like picture perfect black and white successes and you know, that sort of stuff has been few and far between. Mm. It's just, it's going to be hard. It is going to be really, really, really hard. And it, it does and it doesn't get easier, but you really do learn how to love the struggle and the pain. Mm. You know, Mm -hmm. for me, it's been such a great way to manage my grief. It's been a great way for me to like, when I'm feeling really shitty about myself to go kick my butt and say, yeah, that, you know what, actually that felt worse than what I'm going through. And I survived. Like, I'll be fine. I'm fine. Everything's going to be fine. I have, I can do it. Like, yes, I can. There's something pretty, pretty amazing about saying, yes, I can. And yes, I will. Mm. Yep. Yep. Making an executive decision to go after something is, it really is half the battle, like you said. And that's something that with a lot of runners, you do see a lot of these common roadblocks, um, maybe things that kind of inhibit people from just going after what they want to go after. So what would you say are some of these more common uh, inhibitions among runners and people just trying to get into it? I was always terrified that someone was going to tell me that I wasn't a real runner or that I didn't, that I shouldn't be there. I, I, it was just my own thing. Like I, the, before I ran my first marathon, I spent the entire day trying to find the perfect marathon outfit <laughs> that would make me look like a marathoner. And then I ended up in like this orange, not orange, yellow, <laughs> lime green. Out, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, feeling like a runner and feeling like you belong when you've convinced yourself that you don't mm, yeah. is very difficult. I still struggle with it. I have people all the time telling me that I'm not fast enough and I'm not good enough that I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. It happened like two days ago. It happens all the time. Those people are out there. There's no matter what you do. There are people who are hurt, who want to hurt you. I don't get it. I don't know, but they're few and far between. This community is so much bigger than them. Mm -hmm. And the truth is people want to see you just do your best Mm -hmm. because we all know what that feels like. And we all know what that looks like. And we all know how running can change your life in so such a diverse way. So just giving yourself permission to say, I may not feel like I belong today, but maybe I will soon. I'm just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. It's just one foot in front of the other. It sounds so (laughs) cliche, but it is so true. You just have to keep going. And soon enough, like you're gonna, you don't have anything to prove to yourself. You may feel like you do, but eventually you are going to feel confident saying I am a runner. And then when someone does say, you don't look like a runner, you're going to say, I know. But that's your perception. Mm -hmm. And we're working to change that. Yep. I don't need to prove myself to you. I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's such a I I love that. You know, it's it's not about proving to others. If you're running to to prove to others something, um, I think that's that's a flaw in and of itself. I think you should be doing it for yourself. Totally. um, First and foremost. So that's that's I love that. That's that's really interesting. And like you said, the the negative <laughs> voices out there are they're the outliers when it comes to the running community. I feel like most runners are there to build you up. They they yeah. want to see you succeed, and there's so much success to go around in running. So it's just yeah, I, that's what I love about our sport. But what you said, finding a community, um, kind of getting out of your own head, uh, is, yes. those are the most important parts there. So where do you see yourself as a runner? Um, in the next few years, are you going to continue maybe sticking to the half marathon and marathon, or do you want to branch out and maybe do some other types of exercise? I don't think I can do a triathlon like an Ironman. And I promised myself that anytime I said I I could not do that, I would at least try. So I foresee an Ironman in my future. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows if I'll finish, like be able to show up on race day, but whatever, we're going to try. Yeah, well, we're just stepping try. on we're the go starting line is half the battle. Who so. <laughs> knows what will happen? I want to do that. Uh, I really want to be Q. So Mm. as soon as my piriformis muscle is under control, we'll try that again. Mm. I really just want 
to run for life. I've taken a huge break over the last four months and, uh, learning to find that balance where I'm my, like running isn't my life has been incredibly beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. I had a very normal summer where I didn't wake up on a Saturday and say, I'm going to go for a long run. (laughs) I said, I'm going to stay in bed. And for me, like that was, that was what I needed. Mm -hmm. I needed to be normal, not a marathoner. And finding that balance of being able to run forever and not run from my problems, yeah, yeah. which I have been doing. Like I will be totally honest. Running has been the thing that has been keeping me together. Mm-hmm. Learning to, to run because I want to run, not because I have to run has been really helpful. So maintaining that balance and running marathons and half marathons and just doing what feels right. That's kind of like what the plan is for now. That's awesome. Yep. I, I know exactly what you mean. I've gone through a bit of a phase myself these last few months, just trying to get back to the basics and really just enjoying it. It's and hard. It is hard. It's really hard. It's uh, when, when you've run either away or towards something for so long, I think yeah. um, you just kind of forget why you, why you did it to begin with. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just, I think at its core running should be there because you enjoy it. And um that's something I, I just absolutely adore about your blog. I think that's that's really what you promote is just the the fun side of running. The it the has to be the humbling there. side. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. You have to have both. You have to set goals and push yourself, and you also just have to find time to give yourself permission to walk or dance during a half. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a balance that you have to learn, and mm-hmm. I'm still learning and running. I'm trying to remember that like running is something I do. It's not who I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like I've made it who I am for a while, and I've I kind of gotten to that point where I was ready to stop. Yeah, yeah, we're all humans uh, first yeah. and foremost. <laughs> I think it's it's hard to remember that sometimes, but uh, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a. But I I do I love that about your entire your whole message. It's just kind of getting back to the basics and remembering running is supposed to be fun. So Kelly, you mentioned earlier that your blog is actually, you're going through a bit of a rebranding process right now. Yes. Can you, can you share with us a little bit about that or is it still kind of hush hush right now? Why not? (laughs) (laughs) It'll debut soon enough. Yeah. It's going to become a whole nother website in and of itself and platform eventually. Okay. Yeah. I will. Here's what I've learned. You know, Run Self Repeat has never really been a running blog. It's always been running is the thing that I did to empower myself Mm -hmm. and to push my limits. And I think until women stop equating their worth to their weight or their Mm -hmm. looks, we're never going to get, we're never going to move the dial forward. Mm -hmm. So I think health and fitness and running and all these, all these different gifts that running gives us is going to be a huge branch of the new website. It's called she can and she did. And what it's going to be is just a storytelling platform. I want to share women's stories, women through history, women in all different aspects of life, build community and give, give other women a chance to see themselves in other women and how they failed and how hard it was, Mm. but how they still persevered, how maybe things changed, like all different stories from all over the place, minorities, first generation college people, everything. I love that. That's, uh, I think people are going to be so excited to, to keep uh, track of your progress with that site. When, when is it going to launch? You have a a date? As soon as we finish, it's, okay. it's, it's been so, <laughs> so hard. I completely <laughs> underestimated how hard it is to launch like a new platform. Oh, yeah. Like Run Self Your Repeat will still be a, like a branch of it. Okay. But eventually it'll sort of just become like, I'm just tired of these, these, you know, like publications still pushing clickbaity, mm-hmm. how to get rock solid abs. It's like, why? Yep. <laughs> Should your app do something? <laughs> If you want, like, I, I just, you know, like dating advice, all this, all this stuff that is just like holding women back. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of it. And I was like, be the change you wish to see in the world. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I'll step up to the plate. And there's so many other people doing it, which is amazing. But, you know, I just want to help other women and elevate their stories and just show other women that, you know, like the, the more we see ourselves in other people, the easier it is 
to believe that we also can succeed. Mm, and as women, like we already have, this cards are stacked against us still, even though it's 2017. <laughs> Um, whatever I can do to bring everyone together, I'm going to try. Yeah. Well, I, I think we could really use more voices like yours in the world, but I think with this website you're launching, it sounds like you're really just making it almost an amalgamation of, of those voices. So that's, that's going to be pretty huge. I think I'm so excited to, to keep track of that and, uh, stronger together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll link, um, our listeners to your current blog and our show notes and um, they'll all, I'm sure people will be very interested in uh, keeping an, an eye out for your new website there. But who knows? It may crash <laughs> and burn. It may be great. <laughs> well, you'll you never, never, know, until you never know until you try. Yep. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great, great life philosophy to have, I think. <laughs> well, Kelly, thank you so much again for joining us today. This has been a, a, such a fun interview and I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks so much again. Thanks for having me. If you're interested in checking out Kelly's blog and staying up to date on her new website, you can head on over to runselfierepeat.com and check out today's show notes for links to everything mentioned at runnersconnect.net forward slash RC821. As Kelly said, we truly are stronger together. And stepping out of your comfort zone is much easier when you have a community who not only understands you, but truly wants to see you succeed. I hope this episode inspires you to keep pushing past your limits and reminds you that through thick and thin, that community always has your back. Before I sign off, next week we'll be hearing from writer and marathoner Duncan Larkin. Duncan writes for Outside Magazine, Competitor Magazine, Runner's World, ESPN, and Running Times, just to name a few. And he's got a new book called The 30-Minute Runner coming out soon, which details how to maximize training when you lead a busy life, which if I had to guess, you probably do. So check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much again for joining me today, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Until next time. Thanks for listening to the Run to the Top podcast from runnersconnect.net. 